Hi folks, Ralph with Stray Benzes. Hope you like the channel, share it with others who might benefit from it. Here's the W126-124, uh, the R107, the uh, W201. They all have one form or any other, the same choice of engine, the 103-104, the 116-117 engines in particular with the uh, KE Jetronic. And that's something that I do today. And that is adjusting the fuel pressure uh, on the low end. Meaning, uh, if your problem is that you your engine stalls or you uh, try to get uh, off the, the line and you you push the gas, gas pedal and it just <laughs> stalls out on you, rough idle, some of these issues. In an earlier video, I shared how to, um, how to do something without a, at least shady tree mechanic style. Uh, I prefer the way of trying to really measure what's going on here. And this is the version using gauges how to adjust the fuel injection pressure and with on the uh, ke jetronic with the eha uh, regulating valve first first things first safety because you're dealing with fuel uh, do this outside uh, away from a building you uh, will find out the hard way uh, how flammable fuel is otherwise the potential exists that something is going to spark so make sure that your ignition system is working properly before you start but don't do that inside the house in the garage uh, because that might just literally backfire on you also you need tools this is the fuel injection kit that i got on the internet it comes with the uh hose kits valves and stuff like that uh, and on the inside i'm going to show you the couple additional tools here some more adapters because porsche vw audi they all had uh ke and k jetronic um fuel injection systems back in the 80s here is a couple of screwdrivers you need a uh, 14 millimeter a 15 uh, half inch and a 12 millimeter wrench and a two millimeter and wrench so far for that and in a moment i go over the installation right there at the fuel uh, distributor so here is the one port you need to connect to that's plugged typically with this plug with a crush ring make sure that that is in good shape otherwise replace it when you are replacing it and up here that's the uh, cold cold start fuel injection port that you need to tap into with the connector what you have here is that's the fitting that goes into it and that's the aluminum crush ring that goes into that make sure that is in good shape it's connected this has this quick disconnect the valve is important there i'll go over that in a sec and then here you have uh, the gauge make absolutely sure that you have a good scale meaning uh, enough uh, range because um, at standstill this one uh, built it up again i need to drain the uh, and the fuel pressure in just a sec even at standstill usually you have something around three three point five bar on this darn thing if not more especially if, if you've just uh uh stopped it but you ideally want a fuel pressure uh supply pressure of 6.4 to 6.5 bar that is way up there 6.5 this is in uh in uh, kilo pesca but uh 650 that's 6.5 bar uh, so 6.4 to 6.5 is what you want and that is with the valve closed and with the valve open you want about 400 millibar difference between the high and low so here if you have 6.4 you want six 
you have 6.3 you want 5.9 or if you have 6.5 you want 6.1 but that needs to be right on the nose if if it's less than that 0.3 or something like that, it's too lean it's gonna stall on you if um, if it is uh, more, it's going to be too rich and well, that causes obviously other issues. While testing this, make sure that your EHA is unplugged. It, this only works accurately if you unplug that. If it stalls out on you, you already might have some, some other issues. Uh, you might have to uh, bridge the fuel pump relay to just crack open one of these to just see if you even have any fuel getting getting to your system uh, to begin with i mean all of this also assumes that you don't have additional vacuum leaks uh that you have enough uh, fuel pressure and flow to begin with so make sure that you start from the tank back to here and then these two screws here this one and this one they hold the electronic uh, hydronic actuator in place you loosen these two and I there's another video on the channel where I explain there's a little port behind this uh, valve that is covered with a small little screw you take that screw out watch out don't lose that teeny tiny seal washer I mean it's tiny and you use the two millimeter end wrench and you turn it don't turn it more than a quarter turn you typically in order to have increased the delta p you need to turn it by like usually no more than quarter turn in meaning clockwise and then you uh, put the cover screw back in and reinstall the aha once you have that installed you crank up your engine make sure that your gauge here and this is unfortunately a cheaper one that does not have like a, a uh, relief port on the side where you can get the air out. You need to relieve the air. So make sure that when you have spillage or fuel that you don't spillage all, all over the place. But once you have that done, crank up the engine and then you, uh, with, the, with the valve closed, you take the one reading and then you take the other reading, the high-low with by switching over the valve and that is pretty much it rinse and repeat until you get the 0.4 millibar meaning uh, 400 millibar um, uh, delta p the pressure difference and when you're done don't forget to plug the eha back and make sure that you uh, replace those seals on those uh, uh, threaded connections and Give it a test. All right, we've got the electronic actuator on plug. On running. Cold start port connected to this side of the gate where it's the shutoff valve. Roughly got six bar. When I open the valve, I'm at 6.4, and I'm shooting for a difference between open and closed valve of exactly 0.4 bar, and I should be I should be right there. So again. Here's the EHA. You test run with it unplugged. Uh, the engine shouldn't stall. If that happens, most likely you'll have to adjust your fuel mixture a little bit here, just to make sure that you get it to run at the highest speed. But uh, once you have it running, then you go through the test cycle to make adjustments there's another video on the on my channel but uh quick rinse re repeat without taking it off take these two screws off make sure that you contain the little bit of a spill of fuel that most likely will happen take this off and in the back you will find a tall small little 
uh, screw that you need to take off. Don't lose that little uh, ceiling washer. And behind it is a uh, hex head that you're gonna turn counterclockwise by a quarter turn with a two millimeter end wrench. That is gonna uh, increase the pressure differential, pre uh, the, the pressure differential, yep, between the high and low. And uh, you rinse and repeat this uh, by uh, making the change, putting the little set screw back, putting the HA back, starting the engine, check the high low until you get a 0.4 or 0.4 bar, a 400 millibar delta P pressure differential uh, between the high and low pressure. And then you bolt this thing back, make sure that everything is tight, that the O-rings are still fresh and pliable. Uh, otherwise you'll have a continuous leak uh, somewhere around here. Leaking all over the place, make sure to plug this back in. Uh, resealing these ports properly, putting the air filter back and from then on you should be back in business. I hope you enjoyed this episode. This one took a while. This car had a couple of issues uh, that uh, did not go away until I, I verified the the Delta P using the set of gauge, this, this gauge in this test setup. I hope you be able to enjoy your car and uh, just m making sure that you measure that pressure and you you know that you have enough pressure to begin with because if you don't have enough, it might be a fuel pump issue, it might be a filter issue. Um, sometimes the return line is plugged. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Stray Benzes. Give it a like, I recommend it to other folks to also hopefully benefit from the couple of hands-on videos on this channel. The um, KE Jetronic was also installed on many other cars of the 80s. Once it's finely tuned and um, in tipped up shape, those things work very well with very little uh, maintenance on them. And this is just one little thing that you've got to do in order to keep it running. Good, happy ranching, good luck and take care.